And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the tools that I use every single day, even multiple times a day in order to streamline and supercharge my no code development. And I think by the end of the video, you will agree that these tools are super, super important and you will be glad that they exist and will be more than happy to use them in order to supercharge your own no code development. So let's get started. So the first tool that I use, and this is a great, great tool, is called Postman, okay? It's postman.co. And here I am logged in into my own dashboard here. And this tool is made up of different workspaces. So if I go into a workspace, we can see my workspace. I have like one workspace and sometimes I have a couple. And inside my workspace, I have different connections. I have different APIs. I have different environments that I can set up. And really the purpose of this tool is to help you test and examine and build different APIs in a very, very elegant way. So for instance, here are my APIs. And what's nice about it is that, yes, I can create a new API from scratch. I can, you know, create an HTTP request. I can create a collection. I can do all that, but I can do more. I can actually import an API. So if I go to import, I can import it as a file spec. I can import it as a folder on my computer, a link uh, in a swagger format, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second, raw text or a code repository such as GitHub or Bitbucket. So all of these APIs that you see here, Airtable, Hotels, MovieDB, Speech-to-Text API, uh, to the REST API, WordPress were imported using a specification. So the way this works is that Let's say you want to do a Microsoft Speech-to-Text API, which is a great, great API. If you want to do something connected to machine learning or you want to create some kind of a speech-to-text uh, recognizer, they have a lot of other things that you can use. Really, really great. I use it in some of my projects. You can just Google for it and then you're going to be on this page here. And eventually, if you're while you're browsing, you're going to end up on this page here. And this is called a Swagger documentation. What is Swagger? Swagger is basically a specification of, the, of an API. So essentially, if you want to use Microsoft's um, speech service, right? They have a lot of different services and you want to use their speech service. Well, you're going to find their Swagger documentation uh, for their specific speech service. So you can kind of go to this URL. They tell you in the browser, go to this uh the specific region you're going to get your uh, specification and then you can go back here and you can import it here you can even do it uh, through the link you can do it as a file really really great things uh, great ways of doing it and so here you are this is speech to text api version 3.0 and this is how it's all defined these are the functions these are the methods that you call post request delete you have some get requests here and then you can get this whole API definition as a Swagger file. So if I click here, it's going to download it and then I can import it here. So if I'm dealing with something that has a Swagger uh, specification and this does not limit to just Microsoft, there's a lot of services out there that just give you an API. You can import it here and right away, take a look at this. I have all my models. I have data sets. These are the actual kind of structures that I can work with, right? So let's say I want to work with uh, transcriptions. I want to create a new transcription here, right? I want to uh, get transcriptions, get supported locales. And anytime you're going to be dealing with third parties, API, stuff like that, this is going to be super, super invaluable. And it's not only just for dealing with set APIs. I can create my own API. I can say new and I can create an HTTP request and I can enter a URL here and work with it. I use this tool all the time. Anytime I'm, do I'm dealing with API, if I'm creating a bubble app, or Nadalo app or, you know, AppGyver, which relies on uh, APIs a lot. Um, I test the APIs first. I want to make sure they're actually working in this tool before I go out and I start uh, using the tools to get the actual data. Another tool that I highly, highly recommend is called Paw. And this is the most advanced API tool for Macs. So it is available only for Macs. So if you have a PC, you probably need to go out and find an equivalent tool for PCs. This tool is only for Macs. I have a Mac and I use this tool. It's a great, great tool, super awesome tool. So for instance, I have an API here. I can just uh, send the request and I'm, I'm gonna be getting this data back. And this is actually an API that I used for one of the other tutorial videos. 
And so this is the API. I can look um, the URL parameters I have. I have all this. I can look at the request. I can look at the response. I can look at in JSON form, in XML form, in uh, as a as a you know in web form, just regularly uh, without any special formatting. I can do just headers, raw. So this is super super important. Anytime you're dealing with APIs, which happens a lot, it happens a lot more than you think because. You know, the web is becoming super interconnected. There are all kinds of free and paid APIs that provide you with invaluable data that's going to enhance your app a lot. So that's the first tool. The second tool is actually one of my favorites, and this is a random user generated. And this is super invaluable, right? You're building a Tinder clone. You're building um, Airbnb clone. You're building a Facebook clone, a Twitter clone, anything, any kind of clone, any kind of app where you need to have a bunch of users randomly generated. So you don't want to go out there and create these users manually. Uh, you don't want to think about their names and all this stuff. And additionally, you can even uh, generate their avatars. So their, their pictures, they are images uh, you can generate automatically using an AI. So these are not going to be real people. And so it's an amazing tool. This is kind of what it does. And you can look at documentation and actually use this tool uh, for a lot of the apps that I build. And I'm going to be showing you a kind of a deeper tutorial in the future. I'm building a really cool app and I'm using this tool to generate the data. But just to show you real quick, take a look at this profile photos that you can just click here, this tab right here. And you have ladies here, you have gentlemen, and then you have Lego right you have these avatars and these are all automatically generated look at that i can just refresh it and i have new pictures i have new gentlemen new ladies and the other thing about this tool is that yes you can use it through the website but the true power of this tool is when you're using it as an api or you are using it to generate a lot of data at one time so as an api is great so if you go to documentation here and this is a free tool 100 percent free you can use it as an ajax call so if you're building a javascript app some kind of a front-end app uh, you can use it uh, inside as a library uh, an ajax call directly and here are the results you're going to be getting uh, you can also specify different uh, characteristics such as gender you can request up to 5,000 generated users you can generate passwords uh, you can generate in different formats, which is actually what I'm doing right now. I'm generating like 50 users in CSV format. And that way I can take all this data and import it into Adalo. And I'm building a really, really cool app that you're going to see in a couple of days, actually, using this tool. So you, you have previous versions. You also have nationalities. Let's say you only want US. You want US people, US addresses, right? You can just specify US or you want Netherlands, you want Norway, you want New Zealand, uh, depending on where you're at, depending on what kind of app you're building, uh, the locale of the app, where in the world you are, maybe you, you don't care about nationality. That's absolutely fine. So here you can specify nationality. You can specify multiple nationalities. Uh, you can do pagination, including excluding fields. So it gives you a lot of fields but you can exclude these fields. So just to show you a quick example, here I have a URL that's gonna give me 10 results, format the CSV, uh, nationality is US, uh, we have gender, and the fields that I want are gender, name, email, login, and picture. So if I execute this request, it goes ahead and now it, I have the file ready. So I can open this file, and this is what it looks like right here. This is kind of what we have. So if I close that out, we have 10 users so it looks like eight of them are male two are female and i can specify a gender maybe i want you know 10 female and 10 male right i want that equally i can do 10 male and 10 female then then combine them together so we have the title and we have the first last name email login all this stuff we even have so i am excluding a bunch of fields and you can exclude a lot of these fields but i'm excluding things like address I'm excluding things like city, things that are not really applicable uh, to the app that I'm building right now. And this is amazing because we also have pictures. So take a look at these pictures. We have these picture URLs that you can use in Bubble or Adalo or any other tool really, really easily. Take a look at this. So we have this user here and this is a woman. Uh, so this is their large. This is her large. This is another woman here. And these are generated using AI. So you're not using someone else's personal avatar or personal uh, photo. So 
if I paste this, we have these users here, right? And this is great for uh, building any kind of app where you need it, you need to seed it with user data. And I think that that really covers a lot of apps. And this includes an app that I'm building. It's going to include apps that I'm building in the future. And this is an amazing, amazing tool. They have a nice API, really great to use. Uh, they even have a Photoshop extension, which I'm not really sure what it does exactly. Uh, so you can you can do a lot of these things. So if you are building any kind of a consumer-based app, you need it to seed with users for testing, for validation, for uh, you know seeing how the app is gonna behave and uh, if the app is gonna work correctly or not, this is a great tool to use. The next tool I want to show you is JSON Placeholder, and this is a free fake API for testing and prototyping. So the first tool I show you is actually a tool for working with an API. So this is assuming you have an API and you're working with this API. You want to test if it's uh, getting the data correctly or not. This tool actually creates an API for you for testing. So let's scroll down. Uh, we can try it right now. So you have the, you have a to-do list. And so if I run this script on this URL, right, this is some JavaScript code here uh, using a fetch method. So if I run on this URL, this is the response we get. And it gives us a bunch of resources, so you can get, you know, posts, comments, albums, photos to those users, and these are these endpoints here. And then you have various routes, right? You can you can get all posts, uh, you can get a collection of posts, you can get just one of them, you can get comments for that post. So what's interesting about here is that if I do post, let's say I execute it, and so you can simply click on any of these links, they're absolutely clickable, and you can see what happens. So if I hit post, this is what I get. Now, if I take this URL and I take it into my tool here, which I do prefer, and I execute this request, I can take a look at the JSON response. And this is what the JSON, look at that. It, it's all nicely uh, connected. These are the results, everything. And I can also do JSON text. And this is what I'm seeing. I can do, uh, you know, I can do web, right? I can just take all of this and paste it. I can see exactly what is happening because the first thing I want to do when I have an API is I want to I want to make sure what exactly am I going to be getting back and is this API working or not even before I go into bubble app guy or Adalo, any of these tools whatever your favorite tool is you want to make sure you test the API right I want to make sure okay are we getting the right responses and here you have the HTTP request this is kind of the response here you can look at headers these are the headers here you can look in raw format uh, anything that you want uh, you can look at the request like this. So this makes it super useful. And so right away, there's a lot of value in tools like this because I can look at comments and look at different comments, right? These are the different comments. I can also execute them for comments for a specific post, right? So I want comments for post one, right? So if I come in here, uh, it says post ID one, but this gives us all the comments. So these are comments for all the posts but I can specify post one comments and this allows me to test it out for that specific post, right? I can, I can do it like this, comments post ID, I can specify it this way. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. They even allow you to use your own data with their sponsor mock-in so you can kind of uh, check it out and that way you can use your own data and create a fake API that you can go out and test. The next tool that I want to show you is called retool.com. And what they allow you to do is build internal tools remarkably fast. So stop wrestling with UI libraries, hacking together data sources, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a way for building internal tools. Now, admittedly, I'm not too familiar with their you know, product offering here, but what they do give you is they give you a REST API generator using your own data. So for instance, backend not ready, still waiting for database access, generate a custom data set that you can read and write via a REST API. So here you have your little wizard here, right? You can build your data set. I can build multiple columns. I can add another column and I have two columns. So let's say I want uh, the first column, people full name. I want people interest. And it tells me now it's generating data for me. This is the ID, this is the, the actual full name, and this is the interest. I can change it, I can add another column, right? So I'm actually creating data and I want, um, you know, phone number. Okay, so now I have name, interest, phone number, right? And now I have an API. I can say generate an API 
and my API is generated. Endpoint URL, it gives me all the values, it gives me a lot of interesting things. And with this tool, you are generating a fake API using fake generated data. But let's say you have your own data. Or let's say you wanna generate an API using some kind of a publicly available data. And there's a lot of publicly available sites uh, from US government, from states around the US, from different cities, from different places where you can get all kinds of amazing data that's publicly available that you can use in your projects. So let's say you want to generate an API from a CSV or public data set. You can simply click here and now you are at a different version of the tool where you can upload the CSV, you can build your own here, right? And you can use a public data set. So here's our public list of food types, most popular US cities. So let's say I wanna use um, most popular uh, US cities. So I can view this data source, it's gonna open it up. And so here's kind of what we have here. And this is data.world, another really, really great site that gives you a lot of data, a lot of publicly available data that you can use in your projects, whether this is gonna be a production ready project or you're testing something, or it's gonna be for internal use only, it doesn't really matter, lots of great things. And so back to this tool, I pick most popular cities, I go to next, and this essentially shows it to me in kind of this database uh, spreadsheet type format here. And I can scroll down, and when I'm ready, I can just hit next, and it's gonna generate an API. I can see, so it says, only the first 100 rows of your data set will be used. And I say data, which is kind of the, the endpoint here. And then we have, this is the name of the app, right? They created a custom app for us. And this is what I called this uh, specific API, data, because I can have multiple, right? So we have data, name value, get filter, get by ID, pagination. So right away, I just created a fake API. And this is actually not the only free tool that they give you. They give you a bunch of other tools. So if you go in here, uh, retool.com forward slash utilities, you have a lot of amazing tools, right? Base64 decoder, company logo finder, data generation, date to timestamp, JSON to CSV, hex to RGB, JSON to YAML, a regex generator. This is actually very regex tester all kinds of amazing amazing tools that i have no doubt you're gonna find invaluable so there's a lot of tools i use on a day by day basis this is just a sample the video would be very very long if i talked about every single tool that i use but fortunately you're gonna find value in these tools like i found value when i first discovered these tools so i hope you enjoyed this video here I hope you like these tools. Let me know in the comments below if you like the specific tool or if you want me to talk about some of the other tools that I use or if you have a specific need and you're wondering if there's a tool that's gonna help you to uh, save you a lot of time and streamline your development uh, for your specific use case. So I really hope you've gotten value here. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you real, real soon.